This is the basic operation video for the AutoComp Elite lathe. The first thing we're going to do when we walk up to the lathe is select the vehicle that we're working on. In this case, we're working on a 2015 Chevrolet Colorado. So I select the vehicle by scrolling down to Chevrolet. And it's a 2015 Colorado. And we're going to work on the front first. Now you see, now that I've selected the vehicle, I will have uh, a lot of information displayed. Uh, the discard rotor thickness, that's a key piece that I'll need to check my rotor thickness before I go any further. The adapter, as well as lug nut torque. Lug nut torque's 140 foot-pounds, I'm going to remember that for later. But if I touch on the adapter, I get a picture of it. So I can look on my uh, adapters here and find out the one that I need. This is my adapter, and now we're ready to go to the vehicle. Now that we've picked the right adapter, all we have to do is mount it to the vehicle. In this case, it's a six lug vehicle, so I'm going to use four of the lugs off the vehicle. The lathe does also include lug nuts if you need them. In this case, I'm okay. There's plenty of uh, distance. They pull up nice and tight. The spec for the torque on these lug nuts is 40 foot-pounds, but basically we just need to make sure it's good and tight and that this adapter isn't going to move on the vehicle when I'm, when I'm turning the rotors. So all I want to do is just make sure these are nice and tight. Going around a couple of times to do that. And that's it. Now we're ready to mount the lathe to the vehicle. Okay, now before we make our cut, in this case, uh, my bits are ready to be turned. Uh, the bit minder feature is telling me that. We'll talk about that in a later video. But now what I need to do is rotate these bits. So I've got my tool, and there's a small Torx head. I loosen up the bit. I'm going to turn it. These are the round bits that come with the lathe. And you can get six turns for these before you have to throw them away. So I'm only turning these about 60 degrees. You just rotate them until you see the new fresh cutting surface is ready to go. Tighten them up, and now we're all set to go ahead and install the lathe on the vehicle. A brake lathe is a moving piece of equipment. We want to make sure that we stay clear of it when it's in operation. Depending on which side of the rotor the caliper is on, we may need to flip the lathe over to get the cutting bits to come in from the right direction. So all we have to do is swing the chip tray out of the way. It's easy to do. Loosen this lock knob here, and we flip the lathe over carefully. Moving the electrical cord out of the way, tighten up the lock knob again, and we're ready to go. Okay, so now we're ready to mount the lathe onto the vehicle. Notice that the caliper is out of the way, and it's hung up so I have clearance. Pulling the caliper off gives me a nice access point to get the cutting heads in uh, to actually make the cut. So what I'm going to need to do is actually bring the anti-rotate pin on the compensation adapter to top dead center, along with the hole on the adapter that the, the anti-rotate pin is going to go into. So now all I need to do is turn the speed knob slowly until the anti-rotate pin comes to top dead center. And now I'm going to bring my lathe up to the adapter. It's easiest to come from the top and move downward. Now I'm pushing the lathe onto the adapter, lining up the holes, give it a little wiggle, ensure that the anti-rotate pin is in the hole, and we're good to go. So now I can see that the mating surfaces are flush. So now all I need to do is run my draw bar in. So if you wiggle it around a little bit while you turn it by hand, you can get it mostly tight. Then you break out your wrench and finish up tightening it the rest of the way. What I want to do with this wrench is I want to feel it bottom out like that and reverse it and just back off a little bit. That'll give it a little room when it's making its adjustments in a little bit when the compensation takes place. Okay, now that the lathe's bolted up tight, now we need to adjust our cutting heads. So I'm going to grab my T-handle wrench here, loosen up this screw right here, and that lets the, the head slide back and forth. And I'm going to roughly center it about the rotor and tighten it back up. So now we're ready to start the lathe, so I just hit the start button. It wants me to verify that I meant to start the lathe up, and I slide my slider up to run the speed up. Now, when the lathe is first attached to the uh, adapter, there may be some run out in that assembly, so we need to compensate. And as you can see here, my comp button is red. It says it's got run out in it. 
So we go ahead and hit the compensation button. What it's going to do, it's going to do a quick calculation to see what it needs to do, and it's going to drive the internal plates in there such that it compensates for that runout that existed. So it might do a cleanup click or two. And when it's finished, the light goes green and our ACT turns on. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now we're ready to go ahead and make our adjustments to the cutting head. So what I'm going to do is grab the feed knob here. I'm going to feed the bits in such that they're coming just past the edge of the rotor. And now I loosen up the lock knob in the back. Now, the way this works is whichever one is loose is going to be the one that moves. So I want to make sure this one is tight and this one is loose from the back. It's easiest to do the back first because I want to be able to hear it when it makes contact. I'm going to bring this in until I hear it make continuous contact with the rotor. And you'll be able to hear that dragging around. I'm going to feed it in a little bit more and tighten it back up. Here I've got a nice continuous sound there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the front. Now I loosen up the front and go ahead and feed it in until I see it making continuous contact as well. Now I've got contact. Now it's nice and continuous. The next step is now, this is what we call our scratch test. So now I want to feed the bits in so that I can go ahead and start my cut. This is a good time to adjust my trip, chip tray. All I'm doing is running in to the inner braking surface. Usually there'll be a relief there and you'll hear the bits go airborne, which they have. Now I can go ahead and loosen up the rear knob, add one tick, which is four thousandths of an inch, to that depth of cut, loosen the inner, the outer one, excuse me, add another tick to that one, which is four thousandths go ahead and engage my feed and let it make the cut. Now that we're cutting, it's a good time to talk about a couple of things that are going on here. You can hear the drive accelerating and decelerating. That's a feature called ACT. What ACT is doing is it's changing the speed of the cut intentionally so that we don't set up a chatter or a vibration because that will destroy the rotors. You've probably seen that before. Alternately, we could put on chatter bands or the little clamp that tries to dampen the vibration. ACT prevents that from happening. It's a great solution. You don't have to worry about that. So that's always leave that on unless you there's some other reason like a locking differential. We'll talk about that in a, in a different video. Also notice that we use round cutting bits. They're designed to use a single pass. Okay, so one pass, one cut pass will get you within surface finish specifications of the OEs. So you won't need to go back and do a cleanup pass unless you deem it necessary. But per the specification, you should be good to go in a single pass. So if you take a look on the screen here, you'll see the, the little green pulse there on the ACT button. That's the speed varying up and down. That's what we talked about a second ago. It's going to prevent your chatter. So you can turn that off by pressing the button, but unless you have a really good reason to, it should be left on all the time. Take a look at the feed knob here. Notice how it's bumping around. It's not moving continuously. That's on purpose. What that's giving us is a stepped or interrupted cut. So if you think about it, if we were to feed this continuously and you started at the inside of the rotor and moved your way out, it would create a continuous record player groove. So when you grab, stepped on the, the brake pad, pedal and the pads grab the rotor, it's going to try to force them out. So by breaking that or stepping this cut, we're going to break that record player, player groove and prevent that from happening. So it's going to give you a better result. Now notice another thing too, it just came to the end of its travel right there and hear it clicking a little bit. I'm not sure you can hear that on camera, but basically there's a slip clutch here and we don't have to worry about it damaging anything. If this if it hit the end of its travel here in this case, had it hit the wheel well, it's not going to damage the wheel well of the vehicle, okay? So you don't need to mess around with setting limit switches or anything like that. So now that we've finished the cut, we can go ahead and remove the lathe from the vehicle. All I need to do is loosen up my draw bar, get it good and loose till it's looser than hand tight here. Spin the draw bar a few times until I'm sure that the threads are clear. And then we go ahead and just pull it away from the vehicle. We're ready to move on.